having these short-term relationships versus long-term or more meaningful. I want to say long-term. You can have a meaningful situation with a partner one time, one night, but it's very meaningful. It doesn't mess you up. Oh, it's oxytocin and vasopressin. Men and women have both. More research needs to be done. But what we do know, oxytocin and vasopressin are the hormones that are most closely associated with romantic love. They're produced by the hypothalamus, released by the pituitary gland. Men and women are both influenced by these hormones. However, women are more sensitive to oxytocin, whereas men are more sensitive to vasopressin. And those Neurochemicals do different things. This is why men and women love differently, bond differently, but still yet can do those things. Both of these things, oxytocin and vasopressin, in interact with the dopa, dopaminergenic, oh my God, cannot say the word, dopamine, dopamine, dopaminergenic. Oh. <laughs> I should spell it in the chat. Dopamine systems, damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they stimulate dopamine released by the hypothalamus. So, in other words, um, seeking something, you know, that the gratification from your partner. All right. This is the bonding thing. All right. Basically, like, so here's the distance differences in feelings. And um, oxytocin is more in line with partner preference, preferring one person over another through feelings of that emotional bond like that good love feeling okay feeling of well-being feeling of security feeling of openness An anxiety and aggression goes down from the oxytocin being up so when a woman's oxytocin is going let's say post orgasm provided she didn't blow her uh neural systems with this she's get that warm post orgasmic feeling with this partner okay and so that's, that's what oxytocin does. Now, oxytocin also is in charge of what's going on in the uterus, what's in charge of what's going on with breastfeeding and bonding with a child. And so that's why oxytocin is more powerful. Women are more sensitive to oxytocin than, than men because women bear children and oxytocin is involved with that mother-child bond. And this is why the mother-child bond is generally more powerful at birth than the, the, the father-child bond. Now, the father-child bond is not I mean, it's reducing the power of that, but it just, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a neurochemical fact, okay? The mother-child bond is, is on a chemical level more, more severe initially because she was carrying the baby, and it's this bond that happens with the oxytocin. Whereas with vasopressin, vasopressin is a bonding mechanism too. But what that's more in, in charge of, it seems seems to be in more in charge of the attraction aspect of the bonding mechanism. Like you're you're attracted to this person and you're drawn to this person and selection goes up. So I have options, but I'm picking this person because for some reason this person attracts me. Now it's not just physical attractiveness, right? There's sexual triggers, there's experiences and all of those things. Aggression and dopamine seeking though goes up with vasopressin. All right. So why is that? Because there's a protective nature of your partner that goes up. So this goes down to kind of like what we're wired to do. She wants to have, you know, if she's got normal bonding mechanisms, basically her body wants to have that dude's babies. It doesn't mean like her human goals are to have babies. Maybe she never wants to have kids and her, you know, that's okay. That's her, her goals. But her body says, I want to have babies with him and I want to keep this guy around at least while I'm having babies with them, all right? And that's part of where some sexual openness and draw comes from. Now, women, female sexuality comes from a lot of different places. So the reason why a woman wants to bang a dude isn't, this isn't the only reason, but this is the reason, though, that she'll stick around for a while, okay, is, is, is where, what that mechanism does. Whereas the dude, of course, he doesn't get pregnant, but what he does do, what helps propagate the species, and, uh, is that he protects the mate from harm 
and secures her and also secures his paternity, making sure she's not banging other people and, uh, and also taking care of the kids. So it's that dominance effect. And so this is why when a guy is caretaking for a woman in some way, he gets more emotionally attached, okay? Where a woman gets more emotionally attached due to feeling safe, secure, and I'm making generalities, okay? So I'll be like, well, I'm different, whatever. I, okay, there's human psychology is complex when we get down to individuals. These are just the basics, okay? And so she's not wired to take care of a man, although she will take care of a man in exchange, right, for all of these good feelings. Um, and for being a good partner, being a good girl, having that being a part of her identity, these are reasons she'll take care of a man. But really, she wants to be more or less taken care of, of so she can take care of the children. There's a difference. And when men bond with women, it's more the vasopressin. And this is why I like that strong, independent, I don't need no man bullshit is actually unattractive because what it does is it puts her in a place where she doesn't need no man to take care of her. Well, then the dude's bonding mechanisms aren't firing for her like they should be. He might want to bang her. He might be sexually attracted to her. But his reasons for wanting to be bonded and stick around start to get reduced when she acts like she doesn't need him, doesn't want him around. Why? Like a submissive woman. I don't care who you are. And it depends on your definition of submissive. Okay. But whatever. A submissive woman who is just like, oh, I, need, I want you. I need you to take not need, but of course not needy, like dysfunctional. But to some degree, like I want you to take care of me kind of a thing or all oh, like, it's like dudes. This is why simps exist, by the way. This is why dudes simp for women. It's the vasopressin that they're not getting. It's not the sex. All right, guys are just sending money to girls for stupid, okay? Because they are hitting the vasopressin. They don't, they can't, in a healthy way, bond. They don't have access to women. They're not sure to do that, not attractive. They got out problems. They can't get the chicks. So they're sending some chick online money or something, right? Because it makes them feel good. That gives them the feeling of bonding. All right. Yeah, sure. They might jerk off to her pictures, but that's only he could he could just buy a hooker. Right. So if it was all about sex, why doesn't he just buy prostitutes and never be with a woman in any kind of relationship? Because that's not what guys want. Guys want to feel this bonding. They want, they want the girl to have genuine desire for him and genuinely want him and genuinely feel like she needs him. You know, or I almost need is such a terrible word to use here because it's it's almost dysfunctional. But we'll say bonded to him sexually, like she wants this guy to be the source of her sexual and emotional needs and the feel taken care of, and that submissiveness of wanting that is what pulls a dude in for bonding. Not as much the oxytocin, or for the, her, it's more like. Oh, I feel safe, secure, open. I mean, there's the sex part that balances that out, but then it's the feelings of security, wanting to be open to him, wanting to let him lead, wanting to be in his presence. That's more oxytocin. Okay.